Now, is that not just music to your ears? For me, that transports me all the way back to like 2008, 2009, 2010, coming home from school before heading to varsity hockey practice in that short hour and a half window or so that I had after classes before heading out and having not a care in the world. At the risk of sounding cliche, wasn't life just so much simpler then? I can't believe that it's been that long and how quickly that time has gone since then, but it has. And while we've had to move on from so many things in our lives from that era, we can relive a little bit of the nostalgia, maybe even the magic for a brief period of time, because recently Microsoft ended up fixing the matchmaking of just about every classic COD game. So what's it like now? Today, we're going to discuss this recent bit of nostalgia for those that want to go back and play and check it out for yourselves, as well as just have a casual conversation about this era of COD. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What do you think of the ability to go back and play again? Have you or will you go back and try some of these games out for yourself again? Now that matchmaking is fixed, what are the case? Drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay the day with all things Call of Duty as we push towards Modern Warfare 3's reveal. We've got some X Defiant content coming up here soon ahead of the release of that and much more FPS stuff. If you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. And finally, check out my friends over at G Fuel for 30% off your order on things like tubs of hype sauce, MS Melon and hibiscus tea, as well as starter packs with code espresso linked down below, but more on that a little later. For now, let's jump into it. So firstly, a few days ago, Xbox 360 matchmaking started working again for all older titles. Personally, I didn't quite realize that matchmaking for Call of Duty was bugged to begin with the last few years. I just kind of assumed that since these were decade old games, that matchmaking had finally kind of reached that stretching point where there were so few players stretched out so far across the world that you wouldn't be able to matchmake into a game all the time. Those being your games like Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops. You'd find games, but they'd be repetitive matches, not great connection, a whole host of different things. However, apparently it was just bugs in matchmaking as Microsoft adjusted this and made matchmaking incredibly easy for those on 360 or, by extension, also Xbox One or Series S or X. Makes sense though that they want to put the attention there given the Microsoft acquisition by all accounts kind of looks like it's going to be going through here with that, which means a probable inclusion in Game Pass in the future for all prior Call of Duty titles. So why not tackle the infrastructure issues now and generate a little buzz? What unfortunately is still the case though, who knows if intentional or not, is that PlayStation and PC matchmaking is still bugged with hackers still holding a lot of PC matchmaking hostage from both an in-game perspective as well as the potential for malicious intent to your system as a whole. So unfortunately, Xbox is the only platforms here that has had their matchmaking fixed, so it's not as easy to go back on PC or PlayStation. Though naturally, that is great to hear that at least one of the platforms for matchmaking is fixed, and of course, the anticipation and excitement is definitely there because apparently these classics topped the bestseller charts in 2023 three on Xbox a little bit ago. Funny to see that for games of 2009, 2010, and so on. But that said, how's the game now? If you jump back in, what's it like? Well, I went back, tested a little bit about like what I'd say are the big four. Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, Modern Warfare 3, and Black Ops 2. Now, Modern Warfare 2 still had no numbers given the matchmaking and player counts still seemed bug here on that. They still show zero of zero in whatever playlist you're in, but finding matches was incredibly easy to find. So that one, a little bit of an asterisk, but I'd say it's enough. Black Ops, it still says it has 153,675 players when I was online, which sounds incredible, right? But unfortunately, that's been bugged for ages now. That said, 100,000 plus for years at this point. So that one's not as reliable, but the next two, those do make a little bit more sense in regards to reliable player counts or feasible player counts. Modern Warfare 3 says there's 12,426 players online for Xbox and also a total of 95,472 players globally, which I think that one might still be bugged, but the Xbox one absolutely sounds valid, definitely plausible as Black Ops 2 is also around there with Black Ops 2 coming in at a reported 8,408 players online. So for games a decade old, that's actually really good numbers. But how does that equate to finding matches and in-game experiences overall. Considering I wanted to jump in where most players were going to be, that was primarily things like Team Deathmatch. It's 12 players every lobby, so not too terribly hard to pull 12 players of those 8,500, 12,000, apparently 153,000. Again, that's not right, but you see where I'm going with this here. It's not pulling a huge number out of thin air here with that, and so you still have a decent number of matchmaking lobbies being made all at one time. In every game, I found matches almost immediately. A few seconds wait at most, I'd say that I maybe waited Modern Warfare 2 
like 20 to 30 seconds max for the longest wait so it was honestly really easy to find matches it was nice to be able to jump in immediately now once you jump in well you're gonna find a lot of players that it looks like christmas noobs all over again that's a concept we haven't heard for years on years now at this point but it is something that since there are so many different people buying the game once again going back and playing it well you're going to see a lot of low levels once again and that's awesome to see but just be aware that if you are somebody that gets excited over the prospect of maybe stomping noobs, doing some pub stomping on the older games, you're going to see a lot of fake first timers here at this. Again, coming back to people repurchasing the game, having ample amounts of hours already put into the game, it's something that they might not be as lower skilled as you might previously have associated low rank to skill way back in the day. And talking skill wise for players, I'd honestly say that it's it's pretty skewed. There's definitely those ones that it's a casual game to them that you'll find on a lot of old games like that. If you go back to any that is like more than three, four, five years old at that point. But right now, it's also a lot of players who are hardcore enough to dig up their copies, their consoles, jump back in. So while there's no skill based matchmaking in these games, you might come to see that there's lobbies that are a bit more hardcore than you may remember, or maybe that you have experienced recently if you jumped in just before the fixes came in for matchmaking. Now, the gameplay itself in 2023, well, firstly, before we jump into the core gameplay mechanics and everything discussing that of the classic games, one thing that you should be aware of is that if you are on Series S or X, there's a lot of input delay on these games because it's basically emulating the game through the Xbox via backwards compatibility. If you play on 360, it's totally fine. Now, if you do have an Elite controller and you're on Series S, or X, there is a fix here where setting your response to immediate in the controller settings can help out with this big time. It doesn't get rid of all of it, but it brings it down to a negligible difference in regards to feeling it a whole ton. But as for the gameplay itself, well, it's classic in every sense. Much more slowed down, fast TTK weapons, although that's mixed in with awful netcode from way back in the late 2000s, early 2010s, classic maps, all that kind of stuff. It is a nostalgia hit for sure, though I'm not gonna lie, I'm god awful at these games now having been on 110 to 120 fov for the last four years that 80 fov on console and perceived slower pace as a result because everything's so much tighter in your view was such a system shock and didn't help that all the classic games have like 50 percent less settings for sensitivity too we've been on a 1 to 20 scale the last couple of years versus a 1 to 10 system so i apparently was just a nut job back in the day man my sensitivity was way too high on these so it took a little bit of getting used to finding my footing and bearing here at this but it was a good time it was great to experience everything that we grew up with and again it was the sort of basis for what call of duty became and what shaped the entire genre i mean call of duty was not the only arcade shooter but it became the gold standard for that classic weaponry maps all that kind of stuff and actually out of curiosity and genuinely posing the question do you guys think there's any maps recently that would invoke such feeling of what we find in cod 4 to black ops 2 like i certainly don't hate a lot of maps or weapons but i also personally feel like i couldn't name off as many maps or weapons in the last five to ten years as i could from just the catalogs of cod 4 to black ops 2 alone so just mirror like they're objectively less memorable pieces like that probably doesn't help that we have so many remasters the last couple of years that the potential for incoming memorable maps gets lessened inherently but just a thought that i had but seriously Seriously, if you guys have an Xbox, you guys want to go back and jump in, you have the disc somewhere for these, or you have them digitally, seriously, go back, relive those games, those feelings of how you felt while the player population is still high. I'm sure that it's going to taper off a little bit here in the near future. Maybe not all the way down to where it was, where it feels like it's bugged again, but it's definitely populated, definitely very easy to jump into the game now at this point. So give it a try, have at it, have some fun. But want to let you guys know here, if you have not heard the news already, I know that I'm late on this by far. But anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of this year? Are you going to go back and try some of these games out? And if so, which one are you going back to? Before we wrap everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel. Code Espresso gets you 30% off certain items in the month of July, like Hype Sauce, Hibiscus Tea, and MS Melon Tubs, as well as Starter Kits. So if you want to grab something for the very first time, grab a restock, whatever the case, now is as best the time as any. Link in the description below. And again, make sure you use Code Espresso. But that said, that's what we're going to call it. Drop your thoughts once again. If you enjoyed the video, you found it out on Insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay there with all things Call of Duty, especially as we gear up for a Modern Warfare 3 reveal here upcoming very soon, it seems like, as well as X Defiant and other FPS content. I'd love to have in the community. For now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.